Hello, my name is Daniel Fry, and I'm going to show you today how to process your images in Adobe Photoshop. Most of these processes uh, are, I've been doing this since uh, CS5 at least, so I know that these processes are at least compatible with then. However, I'm pretty sure that these are all compatible with um, even CS1 all the way up to CS6, which is what I'm using right now, CS6. Um, so here we go. What I've done is I have three images pre-selected and I'm going to kind of go through my process on each one. They're essentially the same process but on three different images uh, just to kind of give you a better feel for what it is that I do. So here we go. What I do is I go to layer, new adjustment layer, and I go to levels. Under mode I select luminosity because I only want to affect the brightness of the image right now. Now I'm going to choose the black eyedropper and I'm going to press the alt key and I'm going to move this black slider right here to the right until I see black on my image and once I know where the black is I'm going to move it back and then I'm going to select my eyedropper right in that area and then I'm going to select my white eyedropper press the alt key and I'm going to find out where the highlights are in my image and you can see they show up right there along the right hand side in the middle of the image move that slider back and select now I've gone I've done a good job of of setting my white points and my black points here but what I don't like is I've almost completely removed all the color from my image here so what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna see if I like this being moved down a little bit and I don't so what I'm gonna do and this is the beauty of the layers and masks is I'm gonna take the layer mask and I'm going to mask out the area that I don't want this layer mask to affect uh, so to do this in this particular scenario I'm gonna choose a color range and I'm gonna choose this white color range because I want to take that that white sky and make it blue again uh, let's see make sure I get all of it don't need so much on the bottom and I'm gonna choose OK and it's thinking and it's going to create my mask now what I also want to do here is I want to invert this mask because I want it to be the opposite direction and then because I don't need as many of these shadows in the mask there I want to increase the contrast of this so we'll go to image adjustment brightness contrast and I'm going to create more contrast back just a little bit and choose OK that way I have definite definitely re-added I'm only affecting that bottom part of the image there and not the tree but just the sky I know it doesn't look like much but it'll make a big difference on the next step I'm gonna go to layer new adjustment layer curves and under mode I'm going to choose color and again we're shown here these these eyedroppers I never use the midtone one but I always use the black eyedropper and I'm going to click around in the black areas to see which color correction one I like the best and I happen to like the color that I get from right there for my white or highlights I can either choose up here, which does turn out okay, um, but I think I'm going to go down here into the rapids because I like my rapids to look nice and white. And as you can see, that actually adds quite a bit of pop to the image here. Maybe almost too much pop. I think I'm going to cut that back just a little bit. So within here, in my layer mask I'm going to choose black I'm going to choose my paintbrush and I'm going to remove take down the opacity to about 30 percent 
and I'm going to brush some of the saturation out of it here because that's just a little too much for me. Now this time I chose to paint it out as opposed to creating a more complex layer mask, but that's okay right here. So there we go. Now, as you can see, I, I did remove, I did take care of some of the blue in the sky up here. I, I kind of added in the darkness. I know it doesn't look like it now, but what that's now going to allow me to do is layer, I'm sorry, new adjustment layer and I'm going to choose selective color <coughs> and I'm going to choose mode as color and click OK. Now this is all white up here so I'm going to take the white and I'm going to make it darker I'm going to add some cyan to it. I'm going to remove some yellow give it a little bit of magenta back to it and for all intents and purposes right here right now um, I may go through and, and, and fine-tune this a little bit more but as it stands right now this is essentially about as close to complete as, as I'd normally make it uh, so as you can see here I've only done three layers uh, I've done my my white and black levels I've adjusted my color curves and then I've added back some of the uh, some of the blue sky tones um, but without the purple color cast of the image and I think we can agree that the image went from kind of flat and dull to a, li a lot more punchy and poppy and uh, and better at least I hope you think so <laughs> the next image we're gonna do here is this is a shot of the Midland Tridge. It's in Midland, Michigan. It's a uh, triple bridge. That's why they call it the Tridge. It's going across the Titabawasi River over here. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the last image to this image. So I'm going to go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Levels. Under Mode, we're going to select Luminosity. <clears throat> and then Again, we can find out where our, our white and our black points are by moving these sliders, but I can tell right now that I have black underneath here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then my whites are... Let's see where my whites are. Hold down the Alt key and move the slider until we see the white, and it's right there along the left-hand side. So let's move that back and then select the white point. And that sets the contrast for the scene. Then I go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Curves, select the mode of color, choose OK. And then here we're going to select the shadows of this image here. Let's see which one we like. I, think I like the shadow right over here. And then we're going to choose the white eyedropper. We're going to see what we come up with. We're choosing the whites. I like to leave some of the blue in the sky there, so I think I like where that one goes, but I want to I want to make that sky a little more blue. So again, I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, selective color, choose the mode of color, and then again we're on whites, we'll make it darker, add some cyan, remove some yellow, tweak the magenta till it looks a little more natural, and there we have it. Now you'll notice I didn't actually do anything to the adjustment layers as far as the masks are concerned. I didn't feel the need to do much of that, at least not yet. I think on this one, just to make it pop a little bit, I'm going to do an adjustment layer and I'm going to do hue saturation. And this time we're going to leave the mode blank and choose OK. And we're going to give it 
just a little bit of a punch. Plus six. And I'm thinking that's going to be about it right there. So as you can see here, we have the, the end result and we have what we started with. Again, I think you'll see that it's much more punchy. There's more contrast. The colors are more vibrant and also the colors are a little more accurate to what I was seeing here. The next image I'm going to take you to is, is a completely different scenario from a sunrise. This is prior to sunrise. This is about an hour and a half prior to sunrise. Uh, that little white area almost in the middle of your image right there is the moon behind some clouds. This park was also lit up by these sodium lamps that you can see over here in the in these uh, bright spots in the trees. Uh, these, these lamps did a good job of lightening up the, the park, but what they also do is they cast this bright yellow over top of everything, which I don't really care for in this shot. So we're going to do a little bit of, of correcting to that. Um, so again, we're going to start with um, adjustment layer, levels, choose our mode of luminosity, and hit OK. And then we're going to select our black points. That looks a bit too dark. Get a little bit of black over here. And that's all right. And then for my highlights, I'm going to choose these bright lamps. And that's still too dark for me in the shadows. I want a little more, in, a little more light in those shadows. I'm going to raise this slider over here up just a little bit more. And that looks good there. You can see, add a little bit of contrast. And then we're going to go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and Curves. Under Mode, we're going to choose Color and click OK. Again, we're going to grab our eyedropper and we're going to select the shadows of the image until we find one that gives us what we're looking for. I happen to like that right there. And then I'm also going to select around on this lamp to kind of try to correct some more of that yellow. And you can see we really got rid of that yellow cast in the shot. The grass is a lot greener now than it was before. Um, the only other thing that I would probably do to this shot is, is I'm gonna I'm gonna increase the clarity of these of these trees these tree branches right here. You can see here that the uh, the wind was blowing. This is a 30 second shot, um, so these leaves here blew around. I actually like that, but I want these here to be a little more crisp. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate this layer and then I'm going to rasterize the layer and then you're going to choose filter, other, high pass and then you want to set this radius here to just when you start to see the definition of these tree lines. You don't want to go too far you want to just barely see them and right now one pixel looks good to me. I choose that and then up here under your uh, overlay mode we're going to choose overlay and it might not look like it did much but when we zoom in here you'll see me remove it and then you'll see me add it back in and I'm not sure if the video shows it or not but it adds quite a bit more clarity to those branches and and uh, sharpens them up a bit there. So when I zoom back, put it on the screen, you'll see here this is the after, this is the before. There's not much change here because I, I like to try to get as much done in the camera as close as I possibly can. This one here doesn't change much. I'm just kind of correcting the white and black levels and then color correcting the, the image just a little bit more. And there you have it. That is my default process that I go through on my landscape photos. I hope you've uh, you found this information useful. And uh, if 
feedback is always appreciated, and thanks for watching.